Welcome to part two of Seeing Birkeland Currents. In today's episode, me and Jim will be discussing off-axis Birkeland Currents and examining the role that Markland convection plays in the formation of stars and the distribution of material into different shells. So again, we see sort of uh, what they, uh, I think in, in their explanation, they also describe it as a planetary nebula. Uh, yeah, complex planetary nebula. So this is what they consider to be the most complex planetary nebula ever seen in space. Um, and it is, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it is quite beautiful in terms of the detail that you see in there. Obviously, that at the center is what the star is. Um, and then we see various sort of circular shapes of um, material that they claim is expanding outwards. And then we also have this sort of what looks like a, a spiral pattern on the outside. And then we also have this strange sort of S shape that comes through the center of it. Now, when I first looked at this, I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like anything really. but in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but when we, if I go back to this image here, uh, keep. I think that this image is looking down one of these edges to some extent. So, right. so we're looking down the 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 Birkeland current which is why you see these strange sort of circular shapes i think the twist here is because it's 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 changing direction slightly from one side to the other but but i'm not 100% sure about that well there's there's a couple ways you could look at that and again don't don't take it as me saying what the answers are but if those are cylindrical shells looking down a filament then there's there's two ideas we're looking maybe off axis but you remember that a a, a Birkeland current should have a radial electric field too so where it passes through if we're looking down on it through the plane at which it passes through like a double layer we should have those basically like spiral arm type features forming in that so these double here. layer the, these yeah the, yeah so you could explain those by the radial electric field of this you're looking down um, multiple shells of a single current filament which has a, a radial electric field and then where it passes through that plane it's going to drag in or throw out material depending on on its charge and then you should have like a smaller scale Birkeland current spiraling out or in and to me that that's what i see i might be that might be me seeing what i want to see that's <laughs> that's do, how i do you then see that these structures here so the, the the blue bits and and those are part of the the let's say the inner shell of that birkeland current is that am i seeing that correctly yeah you could be um seeing something so yeah, to the me inner it depends how you look at it. Uh, I can look at it in a number of different ways. I could look at it as the as the Birkeland current coming in this way, and then up and then out the screen, sort of out towards towards you, the viewer, and then out in that direction. Or I think what you were saying is that we're looking down, sort of one of these. And the the spirals are some of the shells within it, and then right. this this sort of twisting motion that we're seeing here is is due to the double layer that you discussed, which sort of fits right in the center here, and that as material enters into that, it sort of gets spun off in in different directions. Is that is that am I right? No, if you if you look at the if you find the image of the flame nebula i think that part of it will become clearer it's a different perspective on the same kind of filament um 
but it, it, sh it shows, it's, it's a side view of what I think we're seeing right here. Basically here we're looking down the axis and if you look at the flame nebula, what you see is that um, um, you'll see this this one R right. Um, yeah, there's there's probably a better image. That's um, you can see one that looks more oh, like a twisted. Yeah, Berkeley, yeah, correct? I know the one you mean. This one here. Let me just pull this one up. Uh, that one. One. This one. Right. See, you can you can see that there's like a in this in this picture there's like a twisted Berkeley current going more up and down through the image. But what you also see is those um, the branching off to the side. So now, this, if you look at that, yeah. right, and those are clear smaller scale Birkeland currents radially outward and and i think we're just getting a different image of the i mean a different view of the same type of structure in in that earlier image you were showing right so this is rather than and again that's probably me just seeing Birkeland currents in a very simplistic way because here what you're what you're sort of showing is the a branching like a tree or a root system um and if we apply that same sort of thinking here, that's what you're sort of talking about here. The fact that these could be smaller branches being created right. from that central point. Right. And you can almost see that like kind of a helical shape in, in those. I mean, it's. Yeah, well, you definitely. I mean, it. it there's, there's most certainly is if we if you trace some of these shapes out, it's hard because obviously we're flattening the image. Um, and it has three-dimensional structure, so it's hard to work out what goes where. But I would certainly say that you can, with a little bit of imagination, you can start to see the S's of a variety of different uh, spirals that could be occurring that coming out from here. It's quite an interesting image. And uh, the, the detail at the center here is fascinating as well, I think in terms of these sort of the, the structure that it creates around that central star there's like a, it reminds me more of the is i think it's the crab nebula you know where you have those intricate uh, like a membrane almost where uh, you would question really whether these are because uh, i'm sure that they would say that this is drawn together by gravity but i would wonder whether these are again filaments that are just carrying current that there was some potentially discharge event that created it and that that created those pathways which then we see repeated further out as well but that most definitely i mean it's not particularly right, that, clear that's the, the the general idea that that you see is like when you look when you pick you can pick a scale for almost all these where the 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 structure looks looks fairly uniform. You can kind of identify what it is, and then it seems like all random and chaotic on a different scale. But the trick is when you zoom in then or out to the the right scale, you find the same thing. It's like all nice, clear Birkeland currents, and that you can say, "Oh, I see exactly what's going on in that scale." It's it only becomes random chaotic and noise when you're looking at the wrong scale basically yeah but i, I don't think this is necessarily chaos because i think that even within this there there is it's not as structured as as this obviously but again i think it, it goes to the idea that these were created by a, a discharge event and whether that's outwards or inwards because they all seem to be sort of connecting towards the, that central star, which is surrounded by a bubble. And again, you know, we see images of, of bubble nebula, and I've often wondered about the formation of some of those nebulas. Because I think one of the things that you mentioned ages ago was was what would happen to a Birkeland current if it, if it sort of ruptured? What would that look like? Right, and that's kind of like what you get like what they're seeing in, in the, the, the water bridge experiments, basically that's what they're 
they're doing when they fail. They see what happens when a um, when a um, a Birkeland current stops working. Basically, when when you exceed, in that case, it's a whether um, when gravitational forces um, overcome the electromagnetic forces holding the thing together, that it, it, it everything just gets thrown off kind of on a tangent. So it, it looks like the thing explodes, basically. But Which is what we do see in some of those nebular images, but not here. I mean, here we're, we're talking a, a different different concept. Right, let's move on to... Uh, oh, I need to get to that one. Now, this is, I think, one that we actually talked about um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, this is the I think it is actually called the I Nebula. Uh, oh, they call it MYCN18 because they clearly have no imagination. Uh, but if I open up this one, so again, this this for me is the more obvious. You know, where where we look at this one, and it's quite a complicated image to try and dissect. This for me is a much more obvious image. Uh, where you can see the the pinch coming in. So this is the the tube, the Birkeland current coming down, and there it is leaving, and then it's being squashed down to this pinch. Now this is one of the images actually used in the um, top ten strangest Hubble images, because what's fascinating is at the center you you create this um, image that looks like an eye. And I mean, admittedly, this is a false color image showing you the different uh, elements that are uh, emitting. But still, it's fascinating. And to me, the, the most striking bit about this image is the fact that the star is off-center from that central bit, and the fact that that central bit is hollow. Right, and, that, and that's what you get in, like in Markland convection, is that you get material drawn in only to a, a certain certain radius and and no more. But there, there's really no mechanism to bring all the material into the center. And that's one of the things missing in the the early EU um, ideas was they insisted that the star should be at the center. But there's no mechanism even to bring material into the into the center because to get to the center. You have to have a very high ionization. Yeah, you... basically, there should always be some radius from the sun, or any any material is is brought in in there, and so you should have star formation often in basically one of the shells, and that's that does look like more like where they see the star, the star in that in that case, and it, and that it's important to note too that doesn't fit with the. The mainstream model, why it fails here, is that the star should be in the center of that thing if this was material blown off from the star. Now, what even even in mainstream studies of this particular object, what they thought is they could explain the star's position is if it was moving away from the center, say this thing was formed and the star was being ejected, but the star does not show any signs of of being ejected from the center as far and and there's no um misshapenness of the the filament it's, itself that would explain like it, it this uh, explosion that would have have forced it out of the center so but yes. again that's important in the eu model to to note that it, it shouldn't form in the center what we should have is material spiraling around in these at these particular place where you where you see it being clumped up and then what we have we basically have a particle accelerator there taking positive and negative charge and slamming it together that's where you get the the um the neutral material made and that's that's where i still have an issue like in in the eu ideas um there's this idea that you get neutral matter drawn into the pinch by viscous forces. All, they know that all the positive and negative charge should be drawn into the pinch, and the idea is that the neutral matter gets dragged in along with it. But on all these filaments, what we see is neutral matter 
neutral gas and dust all ejected to the outside of these hourglass shapes, whether it's the local chimney, that's where it's really clear. But in, a, in all cases, you see neutral matter being forced to the outside. So then you have to explain how you would get formation of anything inside. But if you have charged matter spiraling in, curving around in different directions, you've got the mechanism then to create more neutral matter in, inside. And that's that's really where I would go. So now, the, in, so d just to understand, the concept would, would therefore be, um, because I... I in my mind, the reason that they have it, you know, stars forming at the center in the Z-pinch is because, you know, uh, it's nice and symmetrical. You squeeze it in from both sides and then you end up at the center, squeeze it enough and bang, you've got your star. But obviously what, what you're suggesting, and, and again, it comes back to this idea when, when we looked here, is you have these different shells and in the, the Bessel function, obviously, they would be rotating at different angles yeah, and and obviously what happens here is you're effectively squashing some of those across each other. So when you say the particle accelerator, just to make it clear, or at least to try and for me to understand what you're saying, is that that those lines. So you'd have let's say particles that might be flowing in this direction, uh, and at the same time there might be a, a slightly inner one which is traveling in a more straight line. But because of this pinch. They end up being sort of pulled across each other, and therefore right. there is a chance, like you say, of of those colliding. So at the center, or at this, you know, let's just for now argument's sake say that it's this ring here, where you would find collisions potentially occurring. But the question would then be, how do you how do you form a star from that? Well, see that here's where it's important. It, it, even in the EU community, there's it's easy to jump from like this mainstream view to where you realize that they're they're off base and then want to throw all of it away. But what you really have to look at is all the mainstream observations of these. And one of the things that they do know is that there are different elements in these different shells. And, and it is important to understand the mainstream um, idea of what's happening because it's built up based on their observations and what, what they think happens is that you know like in a supernova remnant this material is blasted off and then you get these different layers of um, basically different elements but what what you should have like in the eu model is you should have different elements forming as as we come in towards this pinch these different colors, by the way, in, in the mainstream model, they know that these are different elements. That's that's basically the picture that they're giving you here. And yeah, I can I can it, tell you just just uh, just so that people know. So a red in the image is ionized nitrogen. Green, which is what we see in the center, is hydrogen, and blue. I don't actually see any blue. Is double ionized oxygen. Oh, that'd be here. Yeah, you can see it right in the center there. So already you're seeing clear separation between some of those elements. Sorry, Jim. Right, right. So basically, what you're doing with the with the EU idea is that you you know how Markland convection works. So basically, what you want to do eventually is is map the distribution that they see. That's what we're stuck with. The distribution they see, you want to map that to um, Markland convection in a. Except that you've got a pinch, so it's a little bit more complicated, but. I mean, you can you can see that that's what's happening here. You and what I like about this image is you can see three particular. Um, there's a radius where material circling, and then you move out a little bit, and you see another radius where material circling, and then all the way the the main diameter of that thing, you've got material circling mm -hmm. again all around. And in between, you can even trace this. You can trace starting at the bottom where things are um, circling. You can see a filament that moves inward radially, and it's moving more along instead of moving around. It's moving inward along the, the axis of the whole filament. So that's probably the best mapping of a Bessel function 
filament that we have out there really you can you can see that those distinct places where a distinct radius where material is circling at least three of those and and a, a right there where where your cursor was um there. where it kind of sp it spirals inward and but more along the the, the filament too so that's well, see, that now was... what's... sorry jim what's interesting well what i was gonna say what's interesting here too is the the the, the pattern that there's not at the pinch you know how bessel function filaments work where the the there should be fairly consistent rings of alternating yeah. flow of charge. But if you look at the, the rings here, the distance out radially from the, the center, you, it looks a lot more like the, um, the law that we have for planetary spacing where each, yeah. each ring gets more distance. So that's, that's the trick. There's, Right. I, I I see what you're alluding to without yeah, so saying they... it, which is effectively that we have matter which is collecting in, let's say, a circle here. Right. And, th and there might be, it's hard to tell where the edge of that circle, one there. Mm -hmm. uh, but there might actually be a couple of, because this might actually be a double... It's a bit hard to tell, but there's definitely the white one, and then there's two overlapping pink ones, and then the ones much further out. Right, and and, and they're not equally spaced though, and that's the, yeah, that's, that's exactly. We so to... we're following sort of a Kepler law, uh, potentially in terms of the the position of where those uh, orbits would be, uh, and just for now, just call them orbits. Um, and 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 therefore the reason that we don't see the star at the center, in your explanation, uh, is, is the fact that you the, the material wouldn't collect there. The material would collect and start to rotate around in circles, which does sort of remind me of of Alvin's sort of jet stream concept as well, where he saw that they would start to accrete uh, matter. Uh, admittedly, uh, they're sort of driven by electrostatic forces the the clumping together which does come back to one of the topics you know we do need to dive back into which is the whole ring formation that we see around stars and other things which i think is related to this concept the more that i look at this now so yeah right and and again though that tells you where all the the mass lies because that's the, the the one nice thing about it doesn't matter whether you have a gravity only model or the the EU model or some combination you have to conserve um, like angular momentum for example and the the question then is if the star is off center and it doesn't seem to be moving outward how can how can you get a star spiraling around nothing how can you get it spiraling around an axis the trick here is to realize that the star isn't this huge, massive thing, and all this wispy filament is is basically nothing. That's the mainstream model. The star has all the mass, and and that filament has none of the mass. Then you're never going to get that thing to balance out. The only way to do it is to realize that a huge amount of the matter is in those filaments, and and that. Really, the star is the star is almost insignificant in that the star gets dragged along for the ride, basically. In, in other words, it, which is way different than the mainstream model, where stars move in orbits around galactic center, and then all the nebula just get um, shaped by that. Basically, they're thrown off in jets from from the star, and and that's a totally wrong way of looking at it. You got to look at the the filaments as having pretty much all the all the mass, all the and then stars. Then it makes sense that stars can spiral around them, even though there's not an another 
star across the the axis from it. And right. Because because it's it's basically following that path that uh, you know in terms of the, the the helical motion that that is forced by this structure itself by the the magnetic fields and the electric fields that are created with inside of the the Birkeland current. Right, and and it's 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 so odd that in the like in the in the mainstream model when they jump to it to to other scales, for example, they, they have no trouble explaining how a charged a charged particle spirals yeah. along a magnetic field without well where's the other mass that it must orbit around on the other side of that magnetic field no they don't do that they they explain it in a whole different way but it's the same violation apparent violation of you know um of momentum and and it's i'll argue it's it's the same thing we're seeing going on when when you see a, a charged a charged particle spiraling it it does it the same way that a a charged star spirals along for example the double helix nebula you don't need another star on the other side because the star is almost insignificant and and on a smaller scale our, our charged particle too is almost insignificant compared to what it's traveling in that we don't see basically right and, it, and in effect what we are saying is that actually we need to divorce our idea of looking at the star and really we should be looking at this as the... Because without this, the Birkeland current, the star wouldn't exist. It is connected to this structure, therefore it is part of this structure. It's like looking, and it's funny that we're looking at this image, but looking at your eyeball and making lots of assumptions about how humans behave based on their eyeball when in fact you know that eyeball is connected to the rest of the body. And that body performs many functions that the eye has no awareness of. That's my philosophy for tonight, anyway. <laughs> In part three, we will be examining explosive Birkeland currents, filament structures, and other bizarre phenomena. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.